if you were to study all of the systems in your society you would reduce them to the same thing don't let all the ideological statements fool you now listen carefully we've been taught in religion religious people that the devil is dangerous we've been taught in religion that the devil is the enemy we've been taught in religion that the devil is the one who wants to master you Jesus disagrees he said there are only two masters on earth that controls man and he never mentions the devil there's something more dangerous than the devil he says and it's money a beautiful young Bahamian girl wakes up at 7 p.m. wakes up at 7 goes in the mirror beautiful daughter of a fine family puts on her makeup puts on her earrings and her jewelry fine young girl and she puts on her dress and she walks out in her spiked shoes at 7 p.m and goes to work and she walks downtown to the red light district and she sells her vagina that is not the devil and if you ask her why she does it she will tell you I have to live she hates it doesn't want to do it she feels nasty after it's finished but it's not the devil it's that master makes a man get up in the morning at 6 a.m. put on his clothes and go to a job leaves the job at 4 p.m. and doesn't go home to his wife and his children he goes directly to another job at 5 p.m. works until 3 a.m. and comes home at 3 a.m. wife sleep children sleep never saw him and he does it for four four years and the marriage is destroyed the kids don't know him and that's not the devil that woke him up that's the world what makes a person who got a good job and they got a degree from college sitting in the office and they are responsible for inventory of a big company and a buyer comes to sell his wares to them for the company and says to this graduate who got a master's degree from a top college if you give me the bid I'll give you an extra $40,000. And he takes his hard-earned integrity. The future of his new marriage. And the prospect of good children. And he takes the bribe. That's not the devil. It's money. Jesus said money is more powerful than the devil the economy of the world 
he said it, it runs on money or God. Hallelujah. What wakes you up in the morning? God or the job? Are you so busy to get to work you never pray in the morning? I ain't got time for God. I gotta catch a jitney. I ain't got time for God. I gotta catch the traffic. God or money? Do you know that God never says that Satan is the root of all evil? The devil is a joke compared to money. Economics. The love of money. Not money. The love of it. Two jobs. Sell your body. The love of money is the root. Everybody say root. He didn't say the fruit. You see, people that see fruit. You can't see root. People come and say, you know, I, I got this idea. I got just oh, wait a minute, listen very carefully what they gotta say. Because they got you to find out whether it's God that's talking. Or they come to jive you, use you, and make money off you. People come to me for the last 33 years of this ministry and they say, Pastor Miles, I can make plenty of money for your members. And you'll get 10% on everything that they sell. And they lay out the plan right in my office. He says, if you get all the people to buy this certain product, we'll give 10% back to the church. You'll get 10%. And uh, the people will get the product. It's a good product. And they give me this big picture. And I look at them. And I said, now when you are finished, collect your bike. Stand up on your two feet. And when I open my eyes, be gone. Why? You are evil. You came to me because I have the trust of a lot of people. And you want me to sell their trust for 10%. You are evil. You love money. I promise you, I will never sell your trust. There are pastors in jail right now. I know two of them who did that. Use their members to make money deals. I wonder if you're any different from that person. What motivates you? Is it God or money? You can't do both, he says. Either love the one or hate the other. So according to Jesus, let me give you his conclusion. You can write him down, number one. His conclusion was that every action of all mankind is motivated by either the pursuit of money or service to God. That's it. Now let me just say very quickly, God is not against money. But God is against you serving money. If you forget about money, I'm telling you a secret, it'll chase you. I wish I could convince you of that. If you forget about money and focus on serving God, money will chase you. But if you chase money, money will always outrun you. You will never catch it. We read a verse two weeks ago, and I think you would remember it. In Ecclesiastes 5, 
it says he who searches after money and pursues it never has money enough the race you got remember no you can't remember because you don't know where it went it's never enough you got promoted you're still broke because the Bible says those who accumulate money those who consume it grow faster so Jesus said there's only two motivations in our economic world this is God or money so kingdom citizens are admonished not to worry he says about material things not to be mastered by money but to seek first what the secrets of the kingdom of heaven why because we need to seek a unique abundant lifestyle under an alternative economy that is not motivated by materialism the kingdom of God on earth and that's why Jesus wants us to relearn the secrets of economics in God I want you to read this again for me for unto us Isaiah 9 6 says a child is born and a son is what given and what's he coming with the government shall be upon his shoulders and he'll be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace and of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end and he's coming to reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom establishing it with what righteousness and justice I'll explain that a little later in the series but that's very important two pillars of Jesus's economy justice righteousness justice means what is rightfully yours you get and righteousness means you stay lined up with the government's authority two things you do that he says everything is going to take be taken care of so he brought a government to earth now we got some governments that we're trying to handle and I listened to the BBC yesterday again and I'm listening to the Secretary of the Treasury talk and she said she said uh, democracy is being tested and the politician from from England says yes democracy is shaking all over the world people are disillusioned at democracy and everybody having elections and everybody don't know what to do but quickly let me give you the difference between democracy and the kingdom number one democracy focuses on people people power the kingdom focuses on what kingdom power democracy focuses on what people that's the constitution that's why the constitution always says we the people But in a kingdom, the king writes the constitution with his words. It's I, the king. In democracy, people make the laws. That's why people can change them. In a kingdom, the king makes the laws. And the people can't change them. In democracy, private ownership is the major pillow. In a kingdom, there is no private ownership. The king's lordship reigns in democracy you pursue private wealth in a kingdom it's commonwealth in democracy people compete for resources in a kingdom you prefer one another all through the Bible it says prefer one another one of the verses of the Bible I don't like but I still have to obey it is this one I quote Jesus quote give to him who asketh you end quote now he wasn't talking to no Bahamian but Jesus said it without even quality he didn't say give to those you like give to those who qualify give to those who you don't check he said give to him who asketh you let me tell you why I finally figured out why the reason why there's poverty in this room right now is because someone is keeping what you should have received poverty is impossible in God's country and that's why you don't have what you have right now because somebody stopped it God hates hoarding hoarding is when you build a dam in the system of God 
you build a dam you say I'm gonna stop it right here this is my money this is my house this is my clothes this is my car my my you lock it up and God said wait a minute it's supposed to pass through you so there's somebody from right now who are suffering because you didn't release what you should have released let me give an example of how what I mean by that stand up hand stand up hand stand up brother brother Faki stand up brother Faki okay Sister Anne has a need, okay? She needs my Bible. But I'm not supposed to give it to her directly. Watch this. Because I don't know her. But I know him. So the Holy Spirit says, give him the Bible. I give it to him. I said, the Lord, the Lord everybody said, the Lord, the Lord, the owner told me to give it the Bible. Okay. Now, I don't know her, but she needs a Bible. Now, here's the problem. I got rid of it, so I am in the economy of God. I released it. I'm okay in the economy. But he decides, I like this, I keep in this. So now we got two things wrong. One, he got a Bible that don't belong to him. And two, she ain't got no Bible. So I, he just stopped. Shut up the economic flow. But let's say he hears God's voice too. Give it to Anne. He gives it to Anne. Now, watch this. I still don't know Anne. But it went through someone I knew. Huh. The Lord may tell you today to give someone a hundred bucks, and it ain't for them. Later today, they're gonna meet somebody who needs it, and they're gonna say, "Here." And you never knew that person, but because you were so open to the economic flow of God, that person got it. Welcome to the prayer for forgiveness, renewal, and repentance. This is simply a video I've put together where I like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Heavenly Father together. Please continue to meditate on this prayer for yourself. Speak it daily or listen to this video over and over again. And allow the Word of God concerning forgiveness, renewal, and repentance of sins to reach deep into your spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather together here online and come into agreement in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. Where two or more are gathered, there you shall surely be. And anything we agree upon is touching, you will surely do. The Bible says that if there's any unforgiveness, that it should be dealt with before praying. Therefore, we release any anger, bad feelings, resentment, or any other wrong attitude before you now. We lay it at your feet and we release and forgive those who have wronged us. I lift up those watching this video and we come into agreement and lift up forgiveness, renewal, and repentance. Father, your word says that if we ask for mercy and for forgiveness, you will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Purely on the basis of the promises of forgiveness in your word, with all feeling aside, we believe that the listener is forgiven. Humbly they come before your throne to receive this grace and mercy. Help the listener to forgive themselves and let the past go. We declare in agreement that Jesus is Lord over the listener, and if they believe in their heart that you raised him from the dead, they will be saved with heaven being their eternal home. We receive it and we praise you, Father. Help the listener's unbelief. Their slate is wiped clean right now. In the face of any feeling of guilt and unworthiness, the listener receives their forgiveness from you. The guilt is for leaving and the sin is removed because of your love for them. You have forgiven their sins completely. They are blessed. God in heaven, you have forgiven them because of what Jesus has done. It is not about what they do or don't do. It is by grace through faith that they have forgiveness. They cannot earn it, but you have freely given forgiveness to them because they asked. Praise the Lord. Renew them right now by your spirit in Jesus' name. We speak refreshing over their mind, will, emotions, and body right now in Jesus' name. You, Father, are holding nothing against them. You, Father, are not holding anything back from them. You chose the listener in Christ before the foundation of the world that they should be holy and blameless in your sight. Thanks be to you. In Jesus, they have redemption deliverance and salvation through his blood, the remission, forgiveness of their offenses, shortcomings and trespasses in accordance with the riches and the generosity of your gracious favor. Father, the listener has received your son, Jesus. They believe in his name. Through Jesus, you have given them the right to become your child. Thank you for forgiving them entirely and absolving them from all guilt. They are more than conquerors through the blood of Jesus. They are set free from the past in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Welcome to the prayer for salvation. 
This is simply a video I've put together where I'd like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Father God. Choosing to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is the most important decision you will ever make. Remember, it's not about how you feel after you pray. When the Bible says it, that settles it, and God promises to save you when you ask. God's word promises, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. By His grace, God has already done everything to provide salvation for you, regardless of your past. Your part is to simply believe and receive. So the very moment you commit your life to Jesus Christ, the truth of His Word instantly comes to pass in your spirit, and when you are born again, there is a brand new you. Pray out loud after me. Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised Him from the dead. By faith in your word, I receive salvation now. Thank you for saving me. I am now reborn. I am a Christian, a child of Almighty God. I am saved. Thank you, Jesus.